So the formula is given on the next slide. For the standard deviation, the first part is basically the lower part of the confidence band and this one is the upper part. The major difference uh, you will see here compared to the earlier two situations where we were calculating confidence interval for mean with sigma known and sigma not known. So when sigma was known, we used normal distribution. When sigma was not known, we used T distribution. In this case, we are calculating confidence interval for sigma itself. Here we use a distribution called chi-square. So this symbol here indicates this is chi-square. Calculating uh, chi-square is tedious, so there are ready-made tables available to do the calculation. You can also use uh, chi-square function in Excel. For example, to calculate chi-square n minus 1 comma alpha by 2, the function we will use is chi i n v for inverse because we are given the probability and we are finding chi-square value so it is always inverse and then within brackets the first number will be your alpha by 2 that probability and the second number will be n minus 1 which is degrees of freedom so using this function we can easily calculate chi-square value I give some pictures of chi-square distribution because it is a square it is always positive so chi-square cannot be a negative number and when the sample size increases also its degrees of freedom increases it starts to become like a normal distribution you can see when degrees of freedom is 2 that means sample size is 3 it is more like an exponential distribution it falls and then slows down the fall but as soon as you reach around degrees of freedom 10 that means sample size is 11 you start to see this uh, pattern with the peak in the center and then the two tails on the left and right side. In this case, the right tail is longer. When sample size increases to much larger value, it starts to become a normal distribution. So this is a business process example based on earnings uh, per share, which most of the companies uh, report every quarter. And there are many Wall Street uh, analysts who monitor every company and what earnings they are likely to give so they provide some kind of estimates so a survey of next year's forecast of earnings per share eps of a company named sigma widget was conducted a random sample of 18 financial analysts produced a forecast of eps with average two dollars 68 cents and standard deviation of 90 cents so they feel that this company is going to earn about two dollars and 68 cents per share it is very important because if the company beats the estimate in their quarter it is a very positive sign and shareholders they want to buy such kind of company shares so that they can profit in future in this question it says estimate a 95 percent confidence interval for standard deviation of forecasted earnings per share standard deviation of 90 cents that's what is given we also are given 1 minus alpha which is the confidence level And the next slide basically gives all these calculations. Whenever we do these kind of calculations, uh, which involve a lot of statistical methods, you always uh, write down at the end your conclusion in uh, more pl plain English language. So in this case, it says we are 95% confident that the true population standard deviation for forecasted EPS is between 68 cents and $1.35. So this is uh, from uh, industrial process tensile strength 88 kilograms with a standard deviation of 3.5 kilograms. Several customers have complained about excessive variability in tensile strength. This company has advertised that their metallic bars will give a standard deviation of 3.5 kilograms. As a part of an investigation to check the validity of these complaints, a black belt, which is like a Six Sigma terminology, many companies which implement Six Sigma quality they have like project leader who is known as a Six Sigma black belt supported by very often uh, Six Sigma green belts and uh, supervised by Six Sigma master black belt. A black belt has performed destructive testing on 
23 samples. The sample size is given from recent production batch and obtained a sigma or standard deviation of 3.8. Now please note that uh, this 3.8 is obviously more than 3.5 which this company has advertised. But also remember we should not go only by the face value of this 3.8 kilograms because if you recall uh, based on central limit theorem if you take uh, repeated samples your average and standard deviation would change. Where is the guarantee that next time you take another sample of 23, uh, this 3.8 will remain 3.8. It may be 3.2, which is less than 3.5. The statistical analysis using these confidence intervals takes into account all those things and then gives a clear cut uh, answer whether this is really high or still uh, there is no change in standard deviation. So that's why we have to move on to doing the calculation instead of uh, simply looking at 3.8 and deciding okay 3.8 is more than 3.5 so no further calculation is needed so that will be incorrect so calculate 95 percent confidence interval for standard deviation and then finally answer this question are the concerns from the customers valid question was are the customer concerns valid so the customer concerns were that uh, the variability has increased from 3.5 to something higher and if you look at this band from 2.94 up to 5.38 the 3.5 value is well within this range that means standard variation has in fact not changed statistically we can conclude with 95 percent that it has not increased to a higher value than 3.5. So just to make a picture, we are talking about a chi-square distribution, something like this. And suppose uh, these are the two values, 2.94. Here it is uh, 5.38. And the question was about 3.5, which might be somewhere here. So you can see that 3.5 is well within the natural variability of this process. We cannot say that 3.5 is uh, totally different from this band it is well within the band. If it was outside the band, that would have been an indication that customer concerns are valid. Let me make another picture. Suppose uh, 3.5, let's say, was here, and based on the data, we find the 95% confidence at a much higher value. So that would have been an indication that the customer complaints are really valid. So this way confidence interval calculations can also help to answer many of the questions in uh, businesses and it helps to make decisions whether or not something which people believe is right based on the data. Confidence interval will be P plus minus Z alpha by 2 where Z stands for standard normal variable P times 1 minus P divided by N. So this is actually given on the next slide and it also indicates under what conditions a binomial distribution becomes normal distribution. So this is a business process example. In October 2008, management of Sigma credit card was considering discontinuing its reward program. So as a part of cost cutting initiative, a random sample of 610, so that's the sample size, credit card holders showed 309 of these holders would be disappointed by the proposed action. 309 divided by 610 is 50.66%. So find 99% confidence interval for population proportion of card holders who would have this feeling. So basically this uh, calculation indicates that uh, proportion of people who will be disappointed. So we can uh, conclude with 99% confidence that the proportion of uh, disappointed customers will be between 45% and about 56%.
obviously that's a quite high number and the management has to make a decision based on how many people they are ready to disappoint because that also relates to how many customers they might lose so this way confidence interval for proportion also can be used for decision making in uh, businesses and this was one of the good example